In today's episode, Coach Monica joins me for a deep dive into the world of GLP-1 agonist prescription weight loss drugs like Ozempic and Bonjoro and their potential as game changers in the fight against obesity. As these drugs gain popularity for their effectiveness, we're going to explore the before and after implications, debunk myths, and delve into how a health-forward approach might maximize benefits while minimizing drawbacks. So whether you're considering these medications, curious about their potential, or seeking a healthier lifestyle, join us as we navigate the complexities of prescription weight loss drugs in the context of over 50s health and wellness. Hello and welcome to the Over 50 Health and Wellness Show. I'm your host, Kevin English. I'm a healthy aging expert and the founder of The Silver Edge, and I am on a mission to help men and women just like you build lean, strong, healthy, capable bodies that they love for the rest of their lives. Before we get into today's episode, I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Legion Athletics. Legion makes supplements with all of the good stuff, like all natural ingredients and clinically effective doses, but without any of the gimmicks, things like proprietary blends or hype. Now, look, here's the real deal. You do not need supplements to build muscle, lose fat, or get healthy, but the right ones can definitely help. I personally love Legion's whey protein in their pre-workout, which is called Pulse. And you can learn more about these products and all the other supplements that these guys have by heading over to SilverEdgePartners.com and clicking on the Legion icon. And if you use coupon code SilverEdge, you'll save 20% off your first order or double loyalty points on all your future orders. Again, that's SilverEdgePartners.com. And don't forget to use coupon code SilverEdge. Okay, enough of that. Let's get on with today's show. Monica, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much, Kevin. Always enjoyed being on podcast with you. It was so much fun. Yeah, fantastic. I love it as well. So I guess I want to share with you my big news, and that is last week I turned 60, the big 6-0. Wow. Yeah. So big wow. milestone for me. Um, that is. And my family's been asking me, they were, you know, because they put a lot of effort into making this a kind of a big deal. And they're like, what, what was this? Was this a good birthday? Did you have a good birthday, Dad? And did you have a good birthday? It's like, this is the, in 60 birthdays, this was the best one ever. So had an oh, absolute that's great. blast. Yeah. We had yeah. Um, the whole family came out on Saturday. So that was actually the Saturday, technically, before my birthday. Uh, but they had they had strung up and it was a gorgeous day out here in coastal North Carolina. So I'm out here in a little farm and they had strung up this big, long, happy birthday banner. And there were all of these pictures of me from birth to 60, basically, that people had. Collected. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it was so cool. It was I, There were some of the pictures there that I'd never seen. So really? I guess, yeah, I, I mean, your I'm mom dug really deep sure. on those. There was some digging <laughs> deep for some of these photos. So that was yeah. really, really incredible. We had a big, you know, I have a big, large extended family. So everybody was here. Um, very, very good time was had by all had a nice little cookout. And then the very next morning, my wife and I, she booked a trip down to the Florida Keys and we flew first class. So that was pretty fancy. Oh, yeah, fancy. I hopped up into first class on the next morning. So from here, we would do Wilmington to Charlotte, Charlotte to Miami, and then we rented a car. And when we got down into Miami, where we went to the car rental place, my wife hadn't said anything about it. I had no idea we were flying even first class. Of course, I knew we were going to, um, we we're heading down to Isla Mirada, which is about halfway down the, the Florida Keys. Mm -hmm. And she had, unbeknownst to me, she had upgraded our rental car. So she's thinking, hey, maybe we'll get, you know, an Acura or a Lexus or just a nicer thing than just the general whatever you get when you, when you mm -hmm. rent a car. We get down there and we get a brand spanking new Jaguar. Man, oh my gosh like yeah no i was i was like what? Oh, wow. that, was like, well, that one work i was like hell yeah so yeah, yeah. I, I was just rolling first class all the way first class down to miami hopped in my jaguar and drove down into the oh into my the gosh Keys. tara pulled amazing. out all the stops she did yeah no, doing 60 in style right here so yeah, yeah. Now I feel like i'm now that i've hit this milestone i feel much wiser and sager and much more mature of yeah. course um yeah no, but uh had a really really good time got to do a little bit of fly fishing down there uh, but mostly just relaxed enjoyed enjoyed my time down there kind of a short trip and then of course back yeah. and back at it again so uh, does Tara yeah. fly, fly fish 
no, oh no, no, she, yeah, no. <laughs> she watched you. <laughs> I, I was getting ready to throw her under the bus. Oh, Dara Flyfish, that, that's a funny image. Uh, no, so um, just, I did a, I did a little half day charter. So a guy comes out in the skiff, if you're familiar with fly fishing in very yeah. shallow flats kind of thing, which right. is yep. a lot of what they do down there in the Keys. So yeah, yeah. I, I just had, a, had an absolute blast. And I'll tell you this, so as I was approaching 60, my thought was, all right, what, you know, what do I want 60 to look like? And of course, as anybody as they're approaching any of the big, you know, I think 30s, all of the decades are big milestones, 30, 40, 50, sure. and now 60. And my plan is, my life plan is to make this decade from 60 to 70 my best decade ever. Now, that's a pretty good decades. Um, so I've got my work cut out for me. And obviously, as you might imagine, me being healthy, strong, fit is a big, big part of that. But I, I've got other goals as well. And you've heard me say this before, and I've said it before on this podcast, I have this personal mission to impact positively 1 million people's lives. And I remember mm -hmm. the when that thought first came into my mind as I was maybe a year or so into this business, like, I want to I want to, I want to impact a thousand people. And, you know, I had this big grand mm -hmm. vision and then it, it, you know, going through some business coaching and other thing, I had mentors that were telling me things like, Hey, you, you, you know, dream big and plan big and don't be afraid. Don't sell yourself short. And I can remember having this, this almost calling is like, Hey, you're, you're just meant to reach out and impact positively a million people. And I'm saying, well, who am I to do that? Right. Kind of that, that self doubt, that negativity kind of creeping in there, that voice saying, mm -hmm. um, you're, you know, that you can't do that, but I, th I think I can. So that's, I want my 60 to really sixties to really be all about dedicated to that mission to serving really. Mm -hmm. And the way I'm going to do that clearly, I mean, obviously we coach people here. We're not going to, unfortunately, I don't think maybe again, maybe where I'm selling myself short, I don't think we're going to, we're going to coach a million people. We'll coach thousands of people, but the way we're going to do that is through things like this, right? Through podcasting through, we just finished a challenge. We do a lot of free guides. We have newsletters and I'm going to look for other channels to positively mm -hmm. send this message of taking care of yourself, self-care. And obviously, look, we, we earn livings by helping people improve. I mean, let's, let's call it what it is. It's mostly weight loss. That's what 90% of our clients are coming in, right? But uh, where I really want the messaging to be around is less diet, 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 weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. You're not good enough the way you are. Less of that, more of let's, view our bodies as a sacred vessel that we're going to go through the rest of our lives with, right? You only get one body. Let's take the best care of what we can. Let's optimize health and the look, the body composition, the physique, the weight loss, all of that will come as a result of these, this healthier lifestyle, right? So yeah. that's, that's what I really want my sixties to be a lot, to be all about. Um, I feel mm -hmm. like this is my decade to, to give back, to serve, um, and I just feel, you know, it's my calling. Um, so I, I feel in alignment with that. I wake up every morning, as you probably know, because you and I talk all the time. And this is all I talk about. And I do get sometimes I get uh, I get accused maybe of being very one dimensional. But I will say that, yes, if you want to get me talking and excited and fired up, let's talk about nutrition. Let's talk about, let's talk about strength training, all that. But mm -hmm. I am two dimensional because I will also get fired up and talk to you all day long about fishing. So there you go. <laughs> Not one dimensional, <laughs> two dimensional. Um, anyway, so that's what's going on in my world. Really, really excited yeah. um, about turning 60. I think this is, you know, I'm, I still feel, I, you know, I still feel capable, healthy, confident, strong, all that fun stuff. So looking forward to this decade. Yeah, yeah. I love the, the mindset shift. So instead of thinking about what you don't have, you don't have the body that of a 25 year old man anymore, but what do you, what do you have? Right. You are absolutely really strong. Uh, you can do things that a lot of 60 year old men can't, um, and you're yeah. in great health and you're like tr trying to turn that mindset around for, like I, I love that what you said thinking about your body as a vessel you only have one body and you've got to live in it forever yeah. so you better take care of it 
Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's great. Come this to terms with it. It's very inspiring. Yeah, oh, good. That and that's that is my that's my goal. So that's I'm on a mission here for the next ten years. And I, I think I told you, and uh, I can't remember if I did it on one of our when we had all the coaches in there. But I'm going to do this <laughs> until I'm seventy, and then you're probably going to take this over, and I'm going to start <laughs> a new. It won't be Silver Edge. It'll be the Platinum Edge, and it's going to be for 70 and 80-year-olds, right? Oh, oh, uh, I so love just, it. Yeah, keep, oh, I haven't keep, heard that. Just keep going, and then when I hit 80, I'm going to do something for 90 and 100-year-olds. Uh, yeah. Oh, anyway. I love it. I think yeah. that's awesome. Keep platinum going. Edge. That's right, the Platinum Edge. All right, folks. Platinum Edge. Well, I got a little ways till I, till I get into that one. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm going to blaze the way for us here. Uh, so yep, yep, at any yep. rate, that's what's new with me. So Monica, you've been pretty busy here for the last oh few Ooh. months. What's oh yeah, what's going on with you? Yeah. Let me tell you about it. I have been so busy for the past month. Of course, we just finished one of our twenty one day challenges. We and the last day of it was actually this past uh Sunday. Just had our biggest challenge ever. Uh we and did. this one I think was by far the best. Oh, absolutely the best. Was, so agree. we moved into a new coaching cell phone app, smartphone app, about six months ago or so. And we did do a challenge at Christmas, although it wasn't strictly a challenge, it was more like just an accountability, keep us all sane through the holidays type right, of thing. Right. So this was our first full challenge in that we've ran in the new app. And this one allows us to do so much more stuff than our old app did. Because it was really partially ran on Facebook and then partially ran in the cell phone. But this one, we ran it entirely in the cell phone app. And it was absolutely awesome. We've had so many people with these great wins. They were like, wow, I can... One lady is like, you know, I thought I was really healthy before. But going through this, it shows me where I need to work on, what I need to work on. And it showed me I'm not as quite as healthy as I thought I was. And that's great. I mean, that's the purpose of this challenge is to identify places in your life that you need improvement in and what you can do to improve it. So yeah, uh, yeah. we had so many people to, to comment very similar things like that. Right. We got um, been, we always get great feedback. It's the one, it's yeah. probably the most popular thing we do is 21 day challenges. The most common question we get when these are over, what are you doing another one? Yeah. But yeah. We, the have feedback <laughs> we, yeah. The feedback we got from this particular challenge was even better than, than all of the, all the once we've done in the past so oh yeah if folks yeah. are listening to this and wondering well when are you doing another challenge and monica you're probably a little shell-shocked right now because it takes a ton of work and you do it all takes of a lot it, of work just to be it clear takes a lot of right work. a ton of work preparing yeah. for it and then actually executing it so what we do these what we i mean we've done we've historically done two or three a year i guess two well like Two and a half. Two and <laughs> a half. Yeah. We cause... usually do one in the spring. We'll do one in the early fall. Right. Um, so the next one is probably going to start in late August, early September. So, and it'll probably okay. run for most of September uh, is the timeline we usually go. And then over the holidays, we'll have another one. But it's not strictly like a challenge. It's more on let's all get through the holidays. And it's usually well, like also a support for, group isn't for it? four yeah. weeks. Account- yeah. Instead of just group three. Type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just get through the holidays. holidays let's keep time. ourselves intact. Yeah. Let's not. Keep go sane, really go off go the off deep the rails. end right yeah 100%. keep that stress in check but still have yep. a nice holiday season still right. enjoy, enjoy yourself uh yeah, yeah. so yeah, that's it. kind of what that's why i said two and a half so uh, two and a half but All yeah right. probably august september time frame we'll do our second so back to 21 day time. challenge that's right. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah fantastic all so right that uh, one's over with <laughs> That's overdone. Yeah, you can breathe now a little bit. Of course, we're getting ready breathe to launch a, a lot bit. of those. Some of those folks have moved right into our group, group coaching. coaching. So we're going to keep, yes. keep on with those folks. That'll be fun. Yeah. All right. Well, Monica, you and I were talking before we hit record here about our teeth of all things, mm-hmm. <laughs> talking about teeth and dental care, right? So we wanted to talk a little bit about a while back, we 
talked with Trina Felber with Primal Life Organics. She was on this show, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes here if you guys want to go back and listen to that particular mm -hmm. um, episode. That was but a good But it was all podcast. about holistic, yeah, all about holistic dental care. Strongly, strongly recommend mm -hmm. that you listen to that if you haven't. Really good information. But Monica, it's fair to say both you and I have jumped on the bandwagon with their dental care products, right? So, oh, I jumped on the bandwagon. Uh, you yeah. Know, I'm skeptical by nature. I'm just right. like that. That's the way yeah. I am. Skeptical by nature. But, you know, she got on there. She was talking about, oh, we have a 60 day or I think it was 60 day, yeah, like, 60 like a day trial. Detox kit. Yeah. Yeah. Kit to try. Yep. I said, yeah. Okay. I'll invest that much money in it. Try it for 60 days. Oh my gosh. After three days, I was hooked. I was like, yeah. this stuff Same. is great. Yeah. Okay. So really short history. I had braces when I was a kid. Uh, I've always had very good teeth, but I have very sensitive teeth. I also have some gum issues because I have had four gum tissue grafts. So mm. if you're familiar with what a gum tissue graft is, I am not. it is a really nasty little piece it of dental gum fun. surgery. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's not fun. Uh, the recovery from them is about at least eight weeks if not longer. Hmm. So they're, they're not fun to go through. But I have some very sensitive teeth. Never had any problems with a lot of cavities or anything like that. But the gum sensitivity was always an issue. And keeping my gums nice and healthy has always been a top priority for me with all of these gum tissue grafts. Because let me tell you, if you have to have one, you never want to go through one again. And I've had four. Oof. So I started using her mineral toothpaste, which looks like this. <laughs> yeah, folks, it's a dry if you're, if toothpaste. You're, yeah, if you're listening right now in podcast land, um, those of you, if, if you want to see what Monica's holding up and talking about, just yeah. head over to the YouTube channel. But yeah, go ahead. But um, it's, it's a dry dental powder. So you wet your toothbrush, you dip it in the bristles in there and brush your teeth with it. Uh, within three days, I could see a huge difference in my mouth. They also have some gum drops that you could mm -hmm. use, like either just apply to your teeth. I use it as like a mouthwash. So I'll put in like four or five drops in a cup and put a little bit of water and swish around for 30 seconds or so. My teeth are not as sensitive. I don't need to use mm -hmm. sensitive toothpaste anymore because the sensitivity is not there. I can now brush my teeth and use cold water to rinse my mouth. I was never able to do that before. I would have to let the water wow. get hot and rinse my my mouth with warm or hot water because my teeth were so cold sensitive. Mm. Now I can use cold water to rinse my How about teeth. That? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. You need to write and, in and, and tell Trina, let her know. Yeah, that's amazing. I know. I'm sure I she gets too. all kinds of things like that all the time, but I'm, yeah. I'm sure she does. But they, they look different. So the areas where I had the gum tissue grafts, where the, the gum tissue was actually pulling down the front of my teeth. So you could see a piece of the, actually part of the root and the bottom part of the teeth were exposed. That's another reason why I had the gum or the, the sensitivity. Well, since I've been using this, they look different because huh. they've remineralized now. Because this has gotcha. ingredients yeah. in it that your teeth yeah. need, that their teeth are made out of. And it has remineralized my teeth. So they look different. It's, it's, I am amazed yeah. at this yeah. product. So I really I, am. likewise, I am as well. I, um, I'm all in on the, the mineralized toothpaste, use it every day, use the gum drops as well. And I have noticed that my teeth seem, well, I, let me back up. Cause I'm gonna talk about my teeth are whiter in a minute with, with, because of a different thing, I think, but I'm really I'm looking forward to my next dentist visit because one of the oh, things yeah, that Trina too. said is that you'll notice that they don't need to scrape as much plaque because you know you go into the dentist and they yes they're scraping the plaque off oh, your yeah. teeth and um yeah that's no bueno plaque in your mouth in general is a positive indication of plaque elsewhere in your body so that's not good and she talks a lot about again guys go back and listen to the to the podcast if i'm if you don't know what i'm talking about here but she talks a lot about how whole body health really starts in the mouth and the way she it presents really it certainly makes a lot of sense yeah so she said the mm -hmm. two things you should notice after you've been using the, the and, and she's not even saying it has to be hers but it's something you know a mineralized tooth powder that's mm -hmm. got baking soda and some of these clays and things in it 
one is that you'll have much less plaque when you go to the dentist. And the other is that, you know how they poke up at your gums and they go two, three, four, four, three, two, or whatever it is. She said, those yeah. numbers will improve. I'm not really sure if high is better or low is better, but um, yeah, I don't <laughs> interesting know to see numbers, what my dentist but... <laughs> says. Like, hey, have you been doing something different lately? Or, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you, and folks in YouTube land will see this, I've been using this. And by this, this is the real white. This is but this is another Primal Life organic product. It's their um, peroxide free gel, red blue LED light teeth whitening system. It says the sub, little subtitle is therapy for a healthy smile, but it's a little mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see the colors changing yeah. there. Um, yeah. But it's, it's so it's a little infrared. Uh, light and it's got these little clay i'm not sure what all's in there but i'm sure it's good healthy non-peroxide whitening stuff it comes with this it little... is non-peroxide yeah yes it I is non-peroxide definitely yeah. um it comes with this little card with teeth uh whiteness mm -hmm. ranging from it's a number card from one to 13 and 13 is a pretty dingy <laughs> color number one's bright white and yeah. my teeth improved like four or five numbers just in wow. the space of a couple of weeks of using the the uh, whitening kit. So, wow. uh, yeah, I, I'm on board. <clears throat> I've I have then gone back. I used up all the stuff that came in my dental detox kit. So I bought again. If you're on YouTube, you're seeing oh this, the not, big one. Yeah, I, I bought the big I, old. I need to sack. buy one. Yeah, so I'm they gonna have, buy that next. <laughs> yeah, so this is this is 200 plus brushes. Um, it's just yeah. the powdered um, mineral toothpaste, but it's got the yeah. nano high hydroxypentate, I think is how you say that, and the bentonite, and of course, sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. Um, Hydroxyapatite. Um, yeah, it's got, yeah, it's got all the, all I the good stuff. I think it's how you pronounce it. Yeah. I'm not really sure. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to try that one, but. I've never been able to do any kind of teeth whitening on, on my teeth because the peroxide was so yeah. detrimental to my gums. Yeah, so I want to try, yeah, I want to try that, that system to tell, okay, if Trina's out there listening, I need a deal on that system because I really, well, really, really want to try it. She gave us a coupon code for it. So I'm sure you can use the coupon code. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. But I've never oh. been able to, to do any kind of teeth whitening ever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this one, yeah, I'm sure it, you can do this one. Yeah. It's affected basically, my gums so much. it's her, it's like a a pasty version of her powder that you just put on. I put it right on the mouth guard, but you can just put it right on your yeah. teeth and you pop that thing in and it's got a little timer. It goes for yeah. know, 10, 12 minutes at a time or whatever the timer's set right. for. And then you're done. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Uh, it sounds awesome. Um, yeah. Speaking of dental stuff, I found really quick. Now they, when you buy that dental detox kit, it comes yep. with some flossers. It does. I was not able to use those flossers because they're, they're just a plain unwaxed, like flosser which which is fine some people can use those it's no problem for them I could not my teeth are really tightly spaced together so I went looking and did some um, dental floss research because again I'm that kind of skeptical person mm -hmm. <laughs> and I found some surprising information so for all those people out there who have tightly spaced teeth if they use glide dental floss the kind that glides yeah. in between your teeth really really easy do you know what it's made out of Yes, I do. It's not. It's good, made out it? of Teflon. Yes, it's it is. It's made out of Teflon tape. Yes, it is. That's how it's so yeah. slidey and glidey yep. in your teeth. Okay, yep. Teflon is not good for you because we're trying yeah. to get away from Teflon's pans and you know Teflon coated skillets. And so rub it up you know they say, gums, oh, huh? <laughs> and you're and you're flossing with yeah. this every day. Yeah. Okay, so I said there's got to be a better solution. So I found this company called Coco Floss. So I have one right here, uh, the little thingy here. And you can, you buy this to begin with, and then you can just buy refills to refill this container with a floss. But the, what I like about this floss so much is it's a scrubbing dental floss. So it's not waxed. It has no fluoride, no Teflon, but it's a scrubby floss. So if you actually like pull apart the little fibers, let me see if I can pull some apart here. It's a scrubby, oh, can you yeah. see that there? Yeah, I can. It's a like yeah. scrubbing floss. Oh, so it gets that, your but teeth But it's thin cleaner, enough to get in between your, your but narrow it's thin enough, teeth, huh? Yeah. And it's waxed with, um, I believe, beeswax. Oh, nice. So it nice. is a wax type floss. Oh, no, coconut oil. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Sorry, cocoa floss people. It's waxed with, is coconut oil wax on there. And if you get the 
uh, mint flavor. It has no fluoride and no artificial like flavors in it. Now, right. they have a whole bunch of different flavors on their website, like Tutti banana fruity. and strawberry and tutti frutti, like yeah. kid oriented stuff. But right. if you just get the mint, it's just peppermint oil that's in it. So no artificial f- coloring, flavoring, no fluoride. Nice. I mean, it fits the bill. I love this stuff. I'm addicted now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All so, right. Well, yeah, ed- I need to like tell them. We expect you, yeah, we want everybody out there then to have a, a healthy, healthy mouth and a nice bright white yeah. smile here with some, so, with some good floss. Cocoa floss. If Cocoa Floss people are listening here, send me some free ones because I yeah, hope I just up. sold a whole bunch for you. <laughs> and maybe you can give me a discount yeah. coupon code to give to all of our listeners. <laughs> right on. Right on. And anybody yeah, but, that's interested in the... Um, but it's interested in the, the Primal Life organic stuff, we do have a coupon code. You can go to uh, silveredgepartners.com or just go to silveredgefitness.com and click on partners at the top of the page. Both of them take you to the same place. And we do yeah. have coupon codes there for both the dental detox kit as well as the teeth whitening system. So you can check that out there. All right, um, Monica, you had something fun you wanted to talk about. I do. I yeah, do. So hit us up. I'm, I'm, one of, I'm one of these old-fashioned people who reads the newspaper every day. Now, I do it on my tablet now, not, <laughs> not the real old-fashioned way. A, pa- a habit I picked up from my dad ages ago. Anyway, so I was reading the newspaper this morning, and I saw this article that was really fun. Um, you know, Crocs, the shoe company that makes the, the slide-in, you know, Crocs shoes that everybody seems to love. Okay, well, they've done a collaboration with Bush Light Beer. And they have a new bush like Crocs all terrain sandals or all terrain clogs that they're going to be selling this summer. But wait, it gets better. They're going to give away some. So they want you to, they're going to give away, it doesn't say how many free pairs of the shoes they're going to give away, but what they want you to do is take a picture of yourself camping outdoors and then you submit it online. You have to be 21 or older. Uh, and then you might get a pair of free bush light Crocs <laughs> to wear. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, this here's, is funny. That's, that's, yeah, there you go. There's marketing at its, at its most genius, right? So yeah. I will tell you, uh, <laughs> my stance on Crocs was never, not even in death, would you catch me in a pair of Crocs. Being a Same. beach guy all my I life, right? Who would, I mean, why would we wear Crocs, I, right? I, I don't There's need There's just those. no excuse for Crocs. I will tell you now that I live out in the country that I have a pair of winter Crocs and a pair of summer Crocs. <laughs> my winter Crocs are fur lined, or they're probably not, it's not fur people. I didn't uh, kill anything, or I'm sure Crocs yeah. didn't kill anything. And I have a pair of just my regular Crocs, but they are yeah. uber practical out here on the farm. And I just keep, I keep, I set them now. I'm, you know, it's summertime, so I've got the summer pair out, the winter pair are up. But when I'm just traipsing outside, walking into my chicken coop, or I need to yeah. run out somewhere, they are the handiest things. To... Now, that's the only place I'd ever be seen in them. I don't go to the grocery store in them. I don't <laughs> run up to the gas station. In them. If I'm going to walk down to the, well, I might walk down to the neighbor's house in my Crocs, but that's about the extent of, so you probably won't actually, unless you come to my house and visit me. Yeah. And even then, if I know you're coming, I'm, you won't catch me in my Crocs. But know that I do own some Crocs. I doubt I'll own so, any Bush Light Crocs, but I'll be looking for some future <laughs> uh, collaborations. Who knows? We could maybe talk to the Crocs people and talk to them about a Silver Edge Croc collaboration here. Hey, Kevin, you're you're a closet clo- uh, Crocs wearer. <laughs> I am, in fact, a closet. Well, I was in the closet until now. I guess now I'm out with my Crocs. Yeah, wearing. you're out of the closet now. Yeah, we just told thousands of people that uh, yeah. got a Croc habit. Yeah. All right. Actually, I, I do not own a pair of Crocs. Um, Good for I, you. And I, that's I, the, I do that's have... the right answer for most people, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I do have a pair of Birkenstocks, and I've probably had that pair of Birkenstocks. I believe they're older than my daughter is. So go. my daughter's 20. <laughs> yeah. I believe I've had them longer than that. Yeah. And they're strictly yard shoes, like take the dog out first thing in the morning or at night or something if I have to walk out with her. So there there's the only time I wear my Birkenstocks. But yeah. <laughs> when those bite the dust, maybe I'll get some Crocs. Get some Crocs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, my wife is a big Birkenstock fan and I, I make fun of All her right. when she wears them. I'm like those are your peppermint patty shoes. Now she on the other <laughs> hand, she wears them proudly. I mean she's got several pairs. She's got some with a big shiny mm-hmm. gold buckle on them. So they're, you know Oh yeah. 
a super fly <laughs> <laughs> Birkenstocks, I guess. But yeah, um, different strokes oh, for different funny. folks when it comes to footwear, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. All right. Well, Monica, thank you for sharing the, the Croc story. I love it. Let's shift gears here because what we wanted to talk about today is prescription weight loss drugs. And now before we launch into this, you're probably like, well, wait, 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 wait. Doesn't every time you and Monica get together on a podcast, isn't that what you talk about? Fair well, enough. Lately, yes. Kind of. <laughs> lately, lately, yeah. So you might imagine <clears throat> for nutrition coaches, this whole class of GLP-1 agonists, these weight loss drugs. So we're talking about uh, Ozempic and Wagovi and Monjaro and all the ones that are getting ready to follow these peptides. They, you might imagine they're, they've captured our attention, let's just say. There oh, yeah. is, there, this is not going away. This is growing. And before we, Monica and I kind of segue into this conversation, I will say that I've had a little bit of a change of heart here. My first thought when I saw this, and Monica, I think you'll agree with me, was, oh, hell no, absolutely not. This is a horrible idea. This might yeah. help 1% oh, I... of people, but for them, this is just, this is horrible. People, whatever you do, don't do that, right? <laughs> you need to, it be it, for all the reasons that she and I have talked about on other podcasts before, you're going to hear us have a little change of heart or not a, not a major change of heart, but a little think, change of heart I, in the way yeah, we approach this. Yeah, I think that's an accurate this. term. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's start there, <clears throat> Monica. Well, first of all, I'll say that if you if you never change your mind about anything ever, you're not learning, right? So this is for true. us yeah. to come out and say, you know what, I changed my mind on this. I maybe I was wrong yeah. with that hardcore militant, don't do this stance. Uh, but as more information is coming in, I think that, and the fact that this is now a reality and us railing against it isn't going to change that in the least, I think that this is an appropriate time to kind of talk about where our head is now. And look, this is, as this evolves, I'm sure our position on these things is going to, to evolve as well. But I guess let's just start here for folks maybe that aren't maybe as familiar or caught up to speed or like, I didn't hear you and Monica talk about this in the past. What are you talking about? Tell us a little bit about what are we, when we say prescription weight loss drugs, what are we talking about here? And why is this such a hot topic right now? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's been like all over the the health news here recently Certainly that all has. of these these big celebrities oprah yes, popular culture uh, yes yes popular culture they're all losing weight using semaglutides or uh yeah. you know these these drugs there's actually several different classes of them and every time they come up with a new class of these semaglutides they get better so the semaglutides we're talking about ozempic wagovi rebulus they have, we have terazepatides. Those are Mount Jaro, right. Zepbound. Uh, yep. But these are all GLP-1 receptor agonists. So GLP-1 is actually a peptide that you naturally make in your body already. What these do is it kind of floods your system to help those things work better. So what they think is in, in particularly in severely obese people, their natural GLP-1s don't work as well as they're supposed to. Hence, they have trouble with losing weight. I am, Specifically, I, I, I think did with, a little bit. with appetite control, is that right? Is that fair? A couple of different it, things. Um, okay. So, so it's in the pancreas. It helps with triggering insulin secretion. So if you were low or your body doesn't make enough or your body goes it's through these too quickly... Yeah. It's very inefficient with right. triggering your pancreas to make enough um, insulin secretion to match what you're eating. So if it doesn't match what you're eating, you have all of this excess blood sugar going around in your in your bloodstream. Well, that means diabetes, right? Mm -hmm. If it's if it's chronic, right. um, in the gut, <clears throat> it it slows the way or the amount of time it takes for your stomach to empty. Right. Um, and it also affects your sensation of fullness. So when you're right. on the, the additional of these drugs, it's going to help your body to feel fuller longer. Now in the brain, it works in three different ways, it's going to reduce cravings specifically for certain foods and like for what I call like food noise, mm -hmm. which is like thinking about food. It's going right. to kind of calm those things down. So those three things put together is how these Ozempic and obesity medications actually work. 
Okay, it's so that's really, really interesting. And the reason mm -hmm. we're, this is such a hot topic right now is this seems to be a game changer outside of, or even more so than say gastric bypass or gastric sleeve type surgery. This is a game changer, namely because it, it seems to be very, very effective. Now, to be clear, there are hyper responders to this type of medication. There are responders and there are non-responders. There are people who the side effects aren't worth the weight loss. But in general, yes. this seems to be very effective. And there seems to be almost a culture shift getting ready to happen around these drugs. Because like Monica and I have said in the past, the toothpaste is out of the tube, to use our dental analogy, it's not going back in, right? So this no, is out no. in the wild. As you might imagine, there is a insane land grab for this real estate here. If you are a oh, pharma, yeah. a drug R&D company, you are all over this because weight loss seems to be, look, over half of us now are overweight and obese, and we are getting sicker and fatter as we go. We're not, as a, yes. as a culture, we're not leaning out, right? We are getting No, bigger. we're not trending in the right direction. We're not we're trending, trending in, in the, the right, wrong direction. And this seems to hold, for the first time ever, some promise because clearly diet is, diets don't work you know um, healthy behavior change does work but it takes a lot of effort and you have to be dedicated to that for the rest of your life and so the good and bad part of this is it holds some promise of this sort of magic pill that will help us treat this obesity epidemic now before we, we're going to pick all that apart um, here in just a minute. But before we go any further, Monica, I just want to get your take on this and see if you're hearing any of this. But I am hearing there seems to be a lot of this mounting body of admittedly antidotal evidence and reports from users that it's not only suppressing appetite, but it's suppressing other hedonistic behaviors as well. So you're hearing people yes. talking about, I got on this medication, I quit smoking. I got on this medication. I yes. quit watching porn. I got on this medication, and I didn't. I didn't. I, you know, I I was obsessively gambling, or I was obsessively doing this. And certainly, we're hearing stories of all of my life. I've been an emotional eater. This actually cured it. Didn't help. Yes. It cured it. I yes. no longer have the that. Now, that's a that's a that's a lot. <laughs> that so is a lot. There's, there seems to be, in addition to these biological, physiological, you're talking about pancreas and insulin, you're talking about gastric emptying, but then you went, well, in the brain, what it seems to be doing is eliminating these cravings, but it doesn't seem to be only hunger cravings. The other thing we're hearing no. anecdotally again is people losing <clears throat> a joy of eating that, you know, I just, my appetite's gone and it's gone, gone. Like I've, I've lost the... That is I've kind of a, the, what I would call a side effect from the medication. Yeah. I've, yeah I, but like, for I, some the, people, food is such an, like an addiction. A trigger, yeah. That, yeah, and a trigger is it's an addictive behavior. Right. Um, it's not just a way to fuel your body. It's actually an addictive behavior. And for those people having that to, to calm down, that food noise to calm down and not right. be affecting their daily lives anymore, yes, they, they have kind of lost that that urge that you know high that they get from eating that helps them so much to take away <clears throat> that that addictive behavior side of it but here's the reality we have to we have to keep in mind we didn't cure emotional eating with this drug we put a no. bandaid on it it that is emotional a eating is probably not triggered by a physiological <clears throat> thing. It's triggered by an emotional, psychological trigger, right? Yes. We didn't, we didn't address that by giving this drug. Now, if this right. person's willing to take this injection for the rest of their life, and let's just, let's just take money off the table. Right now, what is it, 1500 bucks a month, something like that? Sooner or later, yeah, it's over $1,000 a month. Pharma and big insurance are going to get together, and they're going to go nudge, nudge, yeah. wink, wink. And everybody who wants this will get it right. via your insurance. Your insur you'll pay a copay, right? So let's take money out of there. But whether you're taking this for weight loss, whether you're taking this for emotional eating, for, for whatever your reasons, you are going to have the benefits for only as long as you are on the medication, which is fantastic if you're a company in the, or a shareholder of a company that's in the business yeah. of making these drugs and selling these drugs. Not so much if, you know, for those of us as a consumer. Now, those of you that are in larger bodies have been overweight all your life, you might be thinking, I don't give a damn. This is the first time in my life that it sounds like something might work for me. And they're like, Kevin, you don't understand. 
I've tried every diet there is and nothing has ever worked. And for that person, they, you know, that look, I'll be on it for the rest of my life. Okay, done. What else? <laughs> there might be some, some little bit of gastric discomfort or some other side effects. Check. I'm, I'm all over it. I would trade that gladly to not yeah. struggle with this thing I've struggled with all my life. So there's, there's a lot here, obviously, to unpack. And as Monica and I and the team, frankly, have been just batting this back and forth. And in full, full disclosure here, here at the Silver Edge, we also have some business coaches who nutrition who are specifically coaching us on business and they are nutrition and, and, and personal training coaches and their advice is, hey, trainers, let's get out in front, stop railing against the, the whole class of GLP ones and, and get out in front of this, right? Talk to people, meet them where they are. Uh, you railing against it isn't doing anybody any good. So that's part of kind of what we're talking about. And just as we're seeing more and more acceptance of this, more and more talk of this in general population, that's why we're kind of continuing this conversation. But Monica, let's let's do this. Let's let's talk to our audience cuz most of our audience are not people that are struggling mightily with severe psychological trauma and have severe emotional eating like all of us probably most of us we we do some emotional eating i'm sure we have some listeners that are further on the spectrum than others but in general that's not really the folks that we're talking about and it's probably not the people that have hundreds of pounds to lose either most of the people who tune into something called the over 50 health and wellness podcast are people that are interested in you know maybe dropping less than a couple hundred pounds, let's say, and really right. doing it in a healthy way. Probably if they've heard our message, they're probably interested right. in more than sustainable. So there are people a little further along, right? So for our audience, what I thought we would do is let's lay out a framework for if somebody were going to either they're hell bent on trying this, and they're going to do it no matter what, or if they're just curious and would like to experiment with this, how we might work that into our framework. Because as you and I have talked about, it turns out that our framework, and when I say our framework, we have a six month program and it's basically three phases. It's a pre-diet phase, a diet phase, and a post-diet phase. That's set up perfectly for somebody who might want to experiment with these drugs. So let's kind of lay out sort of some best practices. Actually, I think, I think the question we need to, to, or the thing we need to talk about first is, why do they, why would they want to consider using a program while in addition to using a GLP-1? 100%. The main reason, main reason, number one reason is because when you are losing weight on one of these GLP-1s, you don't just lose fat. Correct. You, you lose a lot of muscle. 30, You're going to lose some 30 bone. 30 to 40%. Of yes, muscle mass loss when that's you a are, lot. <laughs> yeah, and if you're over fifty, I'm here to tell you, losing weight and losing that much muscle is that you've moved backwards on a health scale. Yeah, maybe you your have body's gone smaller. Ten steps backwards. Yes, I have. mean, yes, you're, losing the weight is good, but not at the expense of losing the little right. bit of muscle that you right. that you have left. Right. That yes. is the reason why you should use a nutrition coach, an exercise coach to, while you're on this journey, right? Some point that's going to be not 100%. just a doctor that's going to write you a prescription and see you in six months. Hope you lost some weight. Bye-bye. <laughs> you yeah. need somebody who's going to be with you every week. Who's going to say, okay, let's look at your life habits. Let's look at some mindset. Let's look at what you're eating every day. Let's look at how you're exercising. Because right. if you don't keep up with those things, your weight loss, you'll, you'll lose some weight. You're also going to lose a maximum amount of muscle. We right. want to minimize right. the amount of muscle and bone that you lose. And, and you know, that muscle and bone loss is not inevitable. If you keep up with it and you are after those other good healthy habits, you will minimize the amount of muscle that you lose. That Absolutely. is why. So I, I love that. So yes. why you would consider a coach who has a health first approach to weight loss or whatever your body composition goals are while you used one of these GLP-1, one of these prescription weight loss meds is because you want to lose fat and not muscle. 
And if you're listening yes. to this, I'm assuming you're over 50, and that is absolutely critical. You know that we talk about all the time here on the show. Muscle is the organ of longevity. We could go on and on about how it's a sink for glucose and all of this other stuff, um, insulin absolutely. regulation. Absolutely, 100%. But what you don't want to do is roll into your 70s and 80s weak and frail and skinny fat no. because you spent yeah. a couple of decades on Ozempic or some other drug, right? So right. I will say this. If somebody comes into our coaching program, I was thinking about this this morning, and it kind of is almost a light bulb moment for me. If you spend the average person who spends six months in our coaching program, let's just say they want to lose 20 pounds, that's their goal, right? And I want to do it, they want to lose it and keep it off for the rest of their life. They're not interested in a crash diet. People that those clients coming into our program will typically spend more time not dieting than dieting. In fact, probably. Correct like a two to one, three to one and not dieting versus yeah, dieting. Probably it's, right two, two to one, three to phase. one time. Yeah. Yeah. Accurate. Where we're really focused on mm -hmm. optimizing that metabolism, getting you healthy mm -hmm. enough, getting your body to feel safe to let go of that fat. We don't mess around in fat loss phases. We're in, we're out. Diets suck. Nobody likes to do it. It's not healthy right. to chronically do it or do it for prolonged periods of time. We've covered that ad nauseum in the past before. And then we have that slow reverse diet back to healthy mm -hmm. maintenance. And mm -hmm. I feel like that would be a perfect framework for somebody who wanted to, to experiment <clears throat> with these GLP-1s. Because one of the worst things Absolutely. you could do. Yeah, think about this. And this is really weird, but... And I think we probably have a slanted view of this because we talk so much about metabolism and restoring metabolism. I, th I think I suspect the clients that come to us are are probably drawn to that messaging. So we get a ton mm -hmm. of people that want to lose weight and are under eating. So I want to say that again, because that might under some of you are like, wait, yes. what? <laughs> they are yes. under eating calorically and they're overweight. You might be thinking, well, wait, how how in the world could that be? How could you be under yeah, eating? It, it seems and weird. Overweight? So, uh, have weird. you had a client, a nutrition client to come to you yet that was eating at an appropriate level of calories where you can just automatically go into a diet cut fat loss phase with them? Only a, a, just a couple, just a couple. So I have, early, I have these, yet to have one. Yeah. Uh, zero. And again, it, it gives us a skewed view. I kind of, I end up thinking that pretty much everybody is under eating and overweight, all the overweight people. But then I walk through a, a Walmart and I look around, I'm like, okay, hang on. That, that can't be the case. Clearly there are people that are eating. There are people out the there. The wrong foods yes. and eating in excess. Yes. There are people but out there like that. I think the people that are drawn to our message that are coming to us as clients, but you're absolutely right. Almost all of my clients, when we say, Hey, cause the first thing we were going to ask you to do is weigh, measure and track all of your food for a week without changing what you're currently eating. And we're gonna look at that. Mm -hmm. And what we typically find or what we always find basically are people are under eating. So that's why that pre-diet mm -hmm. phase, and you might be surprised, what do I, what's the first thing you want me to do to lose this weight? I want you to eat some more damn food, right? Yeah. <laughs> and people are like, wait, 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 what? <laughs> it's not just <laughs> any food either. I don't want you to chug Pepsis and eat Doritos. That's no. not gonna help us. We're gonna- And no Diet Coke. Protein. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Monica and I are going to get into that a little bit later. That's a different uh, conversation. Not, that's but... a different different podcast, <laughs> folks. I know. Yeah, right. We'll go all day long if we get in there today. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I feel like if you were to do some sort of really healthy metabolic restoration phase, and let's just say that's two or three months, really bolster your mm -hmm. metabolism. And that's going to include some probably some reverse dieting, probably bumping up your your uh protein a little bit, definitely making sure that you are strength training. And a lot of mindset changes in those lot of first, mindset you know, eight as to well. 12 weeks, yeah. a lot of mindset changes. Now I, I like to incorporate those and I don't make people make huge changes all at once. We right. do little changes at a time because yep. doing it, doing these big, huge changes at once is not sustainable. It, it's not something you're going to be able to maintain forever. Right. Uh, I have my clients start out. I, I start where they begin at, you know, where are you yeah, at? Right where now? they are. 
Yeah. We, we make little changes at a time. We reverse diet them up slowly. And yeah, most of the time we're asking them to eat more protein, eat more food. We're going to get you on an exercise regimen that's three days a week of resistance training. And no, we don't want you to run 50 miles a week because number right. one, I think that's boring, but I'm not a runner. <laughs> but yeah. We're not going to ask you to do, you know, countless miles on a treadmill because uh, right. again, who wants to do that? That's boring. Yeah. Well, um, and also it's, it's count counter to our goal it's in this space. Look, there's a time yeah. and a place where perhaps a lot of treadmill, especially if you have running goals, something like that, would be appropriate. It's not appropriate sure. in this phase. It's right. counter to right. what we're trying to do, which is bolster that. We're trying to yeah. foster this new adaptation, this new metabolic adaptation. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm with you 100%. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if we changes. were applying this, this framework to somebody who's going to use the GLP-1 drugs, I would say, okay, Let's do two to three months of a reverse diet before yep. you start yes. taking this this medication. Okay, 100%. we're going to get them to a good, healthy place. Your metabolism is running good now. You're at a maintenance calories phase. We've worked you up. We're seeing some strength gains. You've added maybe some muscle. So that's really important. Mm -hmm. They're at a good, healthy place. At that time, we would say, okay, doctor, we're ready to start their, your prescription. So hit then it. they would start, yeah. hit it, we're going to get on this prescription. Yeah. If they were my client, I would kind of take the first couple of weeks, maybe the first month, see how they're feeling, see what kind of side effects they're going to have from this medication. Um, it seems to be across the board as to, it, it kind of affects different people in different ways. Yeah, you know, Everybody it hears about, oh, we have the, um, the GI issues. Um, some people mm -hmm. find that, you know, they are, they, they aren't having to deal with those emotional things like how they were. Some people are able to pretty much maintain eating the way they were. Just, they just don't want as much of it. Some people really aren't able to eat as much at all. So at for all. those people, yeah. we will have to adjust their diets. And their workouts. See, and, and yes, and their workouts. So find yeah. ways to eat nutritionally Gotta despite, sure those you know, match, these side yeah. effects. Right. Prioritize that strength tra training, lean into mm -hmm. that good lean protein, to try to get them, keep on eating all of those good whole foods. We're always talking right. about whole foods, yeah. choosing high fiber carbs over low fiber carbs, getting those good healthy fats, and also keeping up with those good habits that we already learned in that in that reverse sure. diet phase so keeping yeah. up with all of those things and by the time they've been with us for two to three months hopefully those things are are good habits that they're able to do without even thinking about them every day yeah so I that's agree. how you know, i would apply it I, you know so typically the way these drugs are prescribed is they stair step up so you have the first week dose or first month dose and then you do stair step up you stair step up and then you stare it's a three or four, a sequence of three or four yeah. jumps till you get to your maintenance dose. And so I'm, I'm with you. I would be tracking my client all the way through, you know, checking yes. in, where's your head, at, looking at, at food as, you know, at, I'm guessing food is going to start to diminish. And I think what you have to be careful here is people really under eating. Um, you do. You don't you... have that because you're hearing about like yes. big, strong bodybuilder type people using this and not being able to hit their they're lower calories not at right. all like they're not able and to eat that you, much food and yes and then you have to start of, start being wary of these people getting into nutritional deficiencies because right. you'll it's you'll so go for such i was getting ready to go there if it's an right expended next, yeah, yeah sorry, if, sorry, if it's for off. like a really long time you do have to be concerned about the nutritional deficiencies right. because you'll get to the point where oh your iron levels are so low uh your magnesium levels are so low your electrolytes are out of balance you're not eating enough protein that's where having a coach to make right. sure that you are kind of checking off all of the necessary boxes while you're in yeah. this cut phase and you know weight loss phase to go through it and and get the most that you can out of this drug and the healthiest right. way possible. That way, when you're finished with it, you're coming out the back end. You're not a skeleton of yourself that you were before. That you're coming out as a healthy person. Right, you're not, coming out ripped and jelly, yeah, not not frail yeah. and skinny fat, one hundred percent. Right, Monica, as you're saying that, so it, there's a couple things occur to me. If we have somebody who's a responder, certainly a hyper responder, somebody who's into this, and all of a sudden their appetite's just way down, they can't. You were saying, hey, you need to eat at least twelve hundred calories. I'm just making up that number, and they're like, yeah. you know what, coach, I can't. I get to eight hundred calories, I just can't. You're right. A couple things are are going to be 
really key here is somebody watching those micronutrient deficiencies or you know yeah. that might be a place where i've always thought that you want to throw away some money go buy some bcaa's right now Absolutely. essential amino BCAAs, acids might be perfect bcaa's and essential amino perfect. acids i mean i've yes. prescribed for vegans before that just can't hit their I said, all right yes. get some essential amino acids and take it that might be a yes. place where because i kind of poo poo those types of things that might be uh, a greens powder another thing i yes. know you would much rather have people like me eat our vegetables i am guilty of from time to time just knowing damn sure i'm not getting enough veggies i'll do green powders that i know it's yeah. not the same <laughs> i know i'm not getting yeah. the fiber but supplementation might come into play here. And the other thing that strikes yeah. me as you're kind of talking through this, what potentially could happen is, let's say we have this person and we're programmed, we got three days of full body weightlifting a week. Um, we might need to dial that back. If somebody's only Absolutely. eating 800 calories, we would I don't dial think that we, back. We, that needs yes. to be, because what we really want is we want to preserve as much muscle as possible. Yes. We want to preserve as much health as possible, but yes. we want to lose as much fat as possible. Yes. All right. Now, and, so and this is the one time there's where you're, you might drop on the floor from this protein powder. I'm not normally an advocate uh, of protein powder. Monica's I do coming not over to the dark side. Myself. That's right. Yeah. I'm <laughs> but a, look, I'm a daily user of protein powder. You Monica are a daily never user. Uses it. Yes. Monica's and right so and I'm wrong, by the way. Are. But <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Yes. It's, it's not right or wrong. But one is This is a case where. Better. Yeah. This is a case where I, I would wholeheartedly support using protein powder supplementation yeah, right. with with a good protein powder is absolutely going to put you in a better place than eating the whole foods and you're not eating enough calories and you're not eating enough protein there use the bcaa's use the protein powder it's not something you're going to have to use forever but yeah. this is going to keep you healthy while you are in this phase agree wholeheartedly yes so let's mm -hmm. recap if you are interested in either you're either either interested or you're gonna <laughs> to take some of these drugs you're planning on it here would be our roadmap our, our advice number one spend a couple of months like monica said two three months let's really shore up that metabolism let's get you strong healthy let's get you well fed before you start this make no mistake this is going to do some metabolic damage to your body you're going to dig a deep hole yeah. we're going to need to climb back out of it so number one is let's make sure we go into this as healthy as possible before we start number two is to have somebody to guide you on this journey to make sure that you stay healthy and that you're not losing muscle and fat and just growing smaller and weaker and frailer and going into osteoporosis and sarcopenia etc etc right. so that's the first two things right so now we've got somebody through these first two phases right they got themselves healthy enough they got on the drug they've spent here probably months by now on this drug they're seeing some fat loss because they're working with somebody that's helping them not make that you know it's not weight loss it's fat loss right so it's it's healthy the next thing i think somebody needs to consider is what's my exit plan this i, I think is probably the most important part yeah is what do you do that, after yeah after drug you makers aren't going to tell you because you're no they want, a, they want a lifelong customer they don't want a they six want you to keep customer. on taking it forever yes. they like that thousand yeah. dollars a month sure that you're do. forking out yes, they do. and you know most of us are not going to be able to afford that forever well and like so i said we'll take money off the table because it's going to be affordable soon mark my words yeah. i said it here i'm sure other people are saying it's not like i'm a profit but yes this somebody somewhere big pharma and big insurance are too powerful for this not to be freely available via insurance it's coming soon to you i promise but yeah you're absolutely right this i think we need a exit plan and what does that look like right how and again i think this is where somebody with some coaching experience would be very very valuable to help you as you transition off because look if you are somebody who was in a, you know, your problem was emotional eating on the weekend or snacking at night or these other things. Those are behaviors you've had. And if you're over 50 years, you probably had them most of your adult life decades, right? right? Those, yes. that, be, that behavior, when we start to wean off this medicine, keep in mind that appetite's going to come back. Those, if you were an emotional eater, those, whatever emotional yes. triggers were, they're probably yes. still there. We didn't treat any root causes folks while we're on this medicine. We simply blunted your appetite. Yes, you're absolutely right. So we need a plan that's more than just a, hey, eat this much food and do these workouts. 
Sure. Monica, to your point, we need a mindset plan, don't we? We do need a mindset plan. And that's what that's plan. why I said the most important part, because yeah. you, you know, when you're when you finish this medication, all of those things are going to be back. You're right. going to have to deal with them. So whatever yeah. problems you'd had before, we need to have a game plan to address just those 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 things that are going to happen that you're going to have to be facing and dealing with. Right. Otherwise, the weight's just going to come right back on because you haven't changed anything about your behavior for the better. You're, you you yeah. haven't dealt yeah. with these problems. You and don't I, have I a game plan. Here's my thinking. If you were to use a program like ours, right, uh, or any, this is the plug for our program, yes, but it could be any health forward program. If you were to use them, you, we would assume that you would be practicing these healthy habits all the way along. So you'd have months and months of yes. practice lots as of you practice. were starting to you have lots of, yeah. yes, if you're one of Monica's clients, you're going to have lots of practice or any oh, of our lots. clients really, as you get <laughs> lots, as you come, as you're coming off of this. But I, I think it's yes. important to have an exit plan. And then I, I don't know what this looks like long-term if maybe you know, that's you run one cycle a year, two cycles a year of something like that in that sort of a framework. I suppose it depends on your goals and how much fat you have to lose. But I could see somebody doing more than one cycle of this, for example, doing two cycles and ending up, okay, now I'm at a body composition where I'm healthy, I feel good, I feel better. I've, you know, now I've had a year plus however long time to really work on these new healthy habits. And I'm confident that I can go forward, maintain this new healthy, strong body for the rest of my life. So that's an ideal scenario. I, I suspect that there's still a lot of work involved in that. And the easy button is still, I I'll just take this we, damn drug, right? <laughs> I think we don't know enough about the drug yet to know what long-term use would be. Personally, no, we don't. clearly we don't. Right? No, no. Personally, I would like to see, if I had a client on this, I would like to see them on it for a set amount of time. So maybe mm -hmm. we're going to be on the drug for, so we'll say three months. And the reason is, is because that would, and then come off of it for a period of time. Yes. That way we can re kind of reset their metabolism, address mm -hmm. all of those behavior issues that we had. You know, they would see a good bit of weight loss there, yep. but we would keep it like a sustainable weight loss. We would reverse diet them back up. Right. Get their, you kind of refix their metabolism, get them back in a good place, maybe add some more muscle back on again, and then go back through another phase of it and like yeah. maybe finish losing that 30 pounds or 40 pounds that they needed to lose. Now, people right. who, you know, have a couple hundred pounds, maybe they need to go through five or six phases of this right. to lose all of the weight totally. And they're probably but looking think, at a more aggressive weight loss than, yeah. than say somebody who has to begin right. with 40 pounds to lose. Yeah. I agree. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's an interesting time. It's an interesting time to be watching these drugs. I think like you had mentioned before we started recording there, you know, we're only seeing the first entrance into this market. So as we talked about, I think about it's going to be a changer. I mean, like a total society, something yeah. we've never seen before. I think it's going to be a, a total society change. This um, is a before and after thing medically oh, I agree. oh yeah yeah like oh, antibiotics yes. or birth control it is a before and yes. after type of event it is a here. before and after i only hope that we look at these all of these glp ones instead of like a shame you know people who are very very overweight yeah. they're going to be shamed into using these drugs and i don't want them to be shamed into using these drugs i want them to think about these drugs as a key that's going to help unlock a better lifestyle for them a better life for them right. if this is the key that fits their lock and this is what they need to start yeah. a healthy lifestyle change then let's use these drugs for good let's not make let's them be stigmatized yeah yeah interesting let's that's the so way Monica, I look as, at these drugs. As, now. You, as you're saying that, I'm smiling. If you're on YouTube, you see I'm grinning here. It's just kind of funny because <laughs> Monica, six months ago, you and I would when we had this conversation would have been like, "Oh, this is this is horrible. This is going to be the worst thing ever." We would have poo pooed all over these things. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. we wouldn't have had this kind of a conversation. But it's just interesting no. as the situation evolves and our thinking around this evolves, and it's more like, well maybe our responsibility isn't to rail against this. Maybe our responsibility is to embrace the people that are, that this is going to work for and help them 
help them optimize the results for yes. health, not for just weight loss, right? Which is what the drug itself promises by itself. But if you use this responsibly in the right way, this could have some really profound effects. So I, I'm excited to see what happens. Definitely interested. You if you're out there listening to this, if you have experience with these drugs, if you've got, if you want to continue this conversation, I'd really like to hear what folks think about this particular subject. You know, the reason why, now I'll look back on it, the, the reason why I think I railed so much against these drugs before is because as a health and wellness nutrition coach, I saw this as an enemy. This was something That's that right. was going to put me out of business, right? Yeah. But the reason why I have changed my opinion on these is because these drugs are going to make behavior-based strategies for wellness more critical, they're going to need those things that we preach to make these drugs more effective and be lasting right. for, for the people who use them and healthy. Yes. Right. For the people who use them. So it actually is going to, we're, we're going to be in even more demand because of these drugs. Yeah, I, Not I agree. Yeah, the other that's, way. that's fair. I, I think you're right. I think that as this as this evolves, there's a certain class of people that don't want our help. They don't, they're not interested in making lifestyle changes, healthy lifestyle changes. They're probably right. not even worried about being healthy and just want to be smaller. And to them, there's absolutely you know, a subset of people like that. They're just like, yeah. I just want to look like the girl on the, you know, in front of the magazine that has a cute yeah. little bikini yeah. on. Yeah. And, and, you know, kind of my initial thinking, I've got this natural, my, my very first reaction to anything that big pharma does is absolutely hell no right so as i saw these things coming i'm like that's a band-aid that's a band-aid that's that's yeah. just you're no you're just making people you're just making money you're just printing money yeah. and as i as i look at this you know there, it's kind of like we tell people right when it comes to nutrition there are no good foods and bad foods morally and i guess you could kind of say the same thing about drugs right we, i mean we have an opioid crisis in our country right now but yet opioids do a lot of good for people that really need them and i think if we look at drugs like this and it's kind of the same way yeah there is the potential for abuse and will they be abused absolutely 100 percent, they will be but oh yeah what about the good they can do and can we can we kind of harness some of that can we be a part of that i, I think that's where the conversation's mm -hmm. moving right mm -hmm. i think you hit the nail on the head right there right yeah. on all right. Well, folks, if you are interested in learning more, continuing the conversation, a couple of things here. We have a brand new Over 50 Guide to Weight Loss Prescription Medicines. You guys can download that over at silveredgefree.com. So just go to silveredgefree.com. You'll see that guide there. It's free. You can download it, take a look, kind of recapping what we talked about here. Basically a blueprint or game plan for if you or a loved one is thinking about going on these drugs, how you might do it in a healthy way. So uh, definitely check that out. Also, we would love to continue this conversation over in our private Facebook group. You can find us over there in the Over 50 Lean Body Blueprint. So Monica and I and Coach Russell, Coach Jess, we're all in there. We're active. Love to hear your experiences, your thoughts. Somebody, some of you maybe who are thinking or have been on the fence about this, kind of has this changed your thinking at all? Love to hear from you. Yeah, I so, would love to see people's comments on this. This is this is well. certainly a hot topic nowadays. So, would love, love, love. Topic, please, yeah. please comment on our in our Facebook page post. Yeah. We want to hear what you're thinking. We want to know what what your experience was. Is are you thinking about it? Are you considering going on this drug? Do you know your neighbor who went on this drug? Yeah, tell Hit us. us up. Yeah, and if you're not a Facebook not a Facebooker, you can always shoot us an email. It's coach at silveredgefitness.com. And I guess with that, Monica, it looks like we've gone over a little bit over an hour. Yeah. Always, I, every time I turn on a mic and, and see you on the other side, I know we're going to we're going to have a fun conversation. So, yeah, uh, with that, we'll go ahead and sign off. Monica, thanks so much for coming on the show, sharing your thoughts here with us. And folks, thanks, thank Kevin. you for tuning in and we'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Don't forget, if you want to learn more about how to effectively and safely leverage prescription weight loss drugs on your healthy aging journey, head over to silveredgefree.com and download our free Over 50 Guide to Prescription Weight Loss Drugs.
Okay, that's our show for today, folks. If you've enjoyed this podcast, I want to let you know that we have other free resources over at silveredgefree.com. There you'll find our free guides with our top tips on nutrition, exercise, and healthy lifestyle to assist you in your weight loss and fitness journey. So feel free to head over there and download anything that looks useful to you. I'll put links to everything we talked about in the show notes. You guys can find those over at silveredgefitness.com slash 280. As we wrap up our time together today, you can show your support for this show in two important ways. The first is to tell a friend about this podcast and encourage them to give it a listen. The second is for you YouTube folks to please click the like and subscribe buttons. And for you podcast folks to please give this podcast a five-star review on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on. And be sure to subscribe and follow so you don't miss any future episodes. I really appreciate you spending your time with me today. And until next time, stay strong. Stay strong.